Hello. Today I'm going to talk about Fuse Online API connectors, how to configure it to interface to an external API. As you know, Fuse Online is a citizen integration tool. By citizen integration tool, I mean that you don't have to write a single line of code. All you need to do is to use the graphical user interface to configure stuff to make things work, to create integrations. So in this particular use case, what I'm going to do is I use, I'm going to use and show you how to do it using the API connector from Fuse Online to interface to an external service. In this particular case, the external service is a Red Hat Decision Manager, which are business rules. I'm going to interface with a business rules engine like because the uh, Red Hat Decision Manager have its own Westfall API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, create a new API, which is a, a much more simple than the Red Hat Decision Manager API, and then put it in front of it, and then do some data mapping before calling the connector. And then when it received the, the response from the uh, Red Hat Decision Manager is going to do another data mapping or transformation before sending the data back to the requester. So you may ask, why, why do you want to put another API in front of uh, uh, an external API? There are many uh, reasons why you, you want to do that. Number one, maybe you don't want to leak all these implementation details from your external API. Maybe return some information which is not required by your application. In that case, you don't want it to, to send that information at all. Or maybe that in your uh, like uh, processing and in your integration, you are going to call some external, another external system to do some data enrichment before you uh, massage the data and send it to the uh, decision manager. So there are many reasons for doing that. So in this particular case, I'm going to show you how you can connect this API connector uh, to interface to any external service and then how you can actually create uh, uh, API and put it in front of the external API and then all you want to do is interact with this simple API instead of uh, the uh, Red Hat Decision Manager. Now let's look at the uh, Simplify API input. So in here, I only want to input uh, the first name, last name, and the ABN. Uh, what the business rule is going to do is actually to validate whether the name is uh, is valid or not, right? So it have uh, very simple rules like uh, it must start from with uh, capital and is uh, uh, not longer than. Uh, certain uh, number of characters, etc. Very simple rules. The the objective here is not to actually demonstrate the use of business rules, but uh, actually how to interface to an external service. I'm just using Decision Manager as an example. And you can see that the input for Decision Manager is uh, more uh, complex than that. In addition to all these uh, first name, last name, ABN, etc., it also provides the API with certain additional information like bot model name space, model name, etc. So some of this information is not really like uh, relevant to the user because it's more to do with the implementation. This is what I call the, well, you, if you want to use it directly, you may be leaking some of the implementation details of your uh, API. And here are the output parameters. In here, this is what our, uh, the decision manager returns. Right in here, I'm just uh, putting like uh, uh, getting rid of some of this uh, because there's no space enough to show you everything that is returned. And if you look at it here later on, I'm going to show you the exact thing that uh, this one uh, the the decision manager is uh, returning to the user. Right. So in this particular use case, all the user wants are three things, whether the first name is valid, whether the last name is valid, whether the ABN is, uh, is valid or not, right? So I don't, well, the user does not need to see all this uh, additional information. And that's why uh, in this particular use case, I put a, a simple uh, API in front of a decision manager. And 
everything in this particular demo is actually deployed on OpenShift. Now, let me just show you this uh, simple uh, Business Central, which is the uh, Decision Manager user interface. So I need to log in. Let me just show you quickly uh, what the business rules looks like. In here, I'm using DMN, uh, Decision Model and Notation. So what, what you have here, well, DMN is a tool, graphical tool, uh, industry standard for creating decision or business rules. So you, now you have the input, you have the uh, uh, this processing step, the field language to actually specify using regular expression to check all this, uh, all, whether the name is valid or not. So as I said earlier, the, so the objective is not here to actually look at how the business were implemented. So the objective is actually how to interface this particular external system using uh, fields online. Let's have a look at the uh, API. This is actually the Swagger definition for uh, interacting with the uh, Decision Manager RESTful API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like uh, input the necessary information and see what the, the output looks like. You can see that when I pass it the information like uh, to validate the first name last name and ABN, so what is returning is quite a bit of information. As I said earlier, some of this information may not be required for a particular application, for your front-end application. That's why I put an API in front of it to filter out uh, and don't want to leak out some of these implementation details. Now, send us have a look at the Fields online. So this is a home page. So you can see that I have already implemented this particular uh, service called Simplified DM service. So how do I create it? As I said earlier, the first thing you want to do, you need to uh, do some customization. So you need to define the external API. In this case, you are going to use the API client connector. So if I click on it, so I already implemented it. So, but I'm going to show you how to create one. So click on this and you can, you have to provide the open API file or spec definition already done. So if you not done so, you can actually create this, this in line here. So I've already done so. So I just says, uh, take this out, click next. So you can have a look at what it looks like. So in here, I de created a path, an operation called DMN, which is a post operation. And is taking the input is called DM input and the output is called DM output and is using basic authentication. So if you look at the DM input, you see that in here I've given it uh, an instance of what the input looks like for the uh, uh, external service, which is the decision manager API. So it requires these three different elements, right? Let's look at the output and see what it looks like. So you can see that uh, this is exactly what has been returned in this particular API call. So I just copy that in there. So I can say, save it. And then get back to that word. Say next, next, and then give it a name. And save it. 
All right, so since I already created one, so I'm not going to save it. So I'm going to just uh, cancel it. So this is the one that has been created. All right, so once I created this API client connector, what I need to do is uh, actually the next thing is to co create a connection. So as you can see that I already created a connection. So let's say that we haven't actually done it. So we need to do a create and select the DM API, which is the API connector we just created. And then we have to enter this information, like the username, because it specifies basic authentication. You have to use a username and password to authenticate. You have to give it the username, the password, and the host, and also the path. So uh, I'm not going to enter that. I'm just going to show you uh, what it looks like. So if you look at it, it looks like this with the username, password, and here's the host, which is uh, where uh, you can actually access the uh, Westfall API of Decision Manager. And then this is the base path. So when you're configuring it, you can actually validate it, right? So everything validated correctly before you, you save it. Now, so once I have defined this, so basically let's uh, recap on exactly what I've done. First of all, I use the API client connector to actually define an external API. And then I create a connection. Basically, it's an instance of that API specifying the username and password because in the API client connector, I specify basic authentication. So I have to provide this information. And I also have to point to the actual host, the URL, how to invoke that particular external service and its base path. Once I've done that, I can start doing the integration. Now let's do, see how I can do the integration, right? So let's say create integration. Remember, I'm going to create a simplify front end or simplify API in front of the external API. So in, in here, I select API provider. Again, it asks me for open API file or spec file. I just give it what I've created before. As I said earlier, if you haven't actually created it, you can say click on create and next. But in order to save time, I just uh, use the existing one. Again, I can show you what it looks like. I defined an operation called validate. And again, it's a post operation. It's using JSON. It's using the input type and output type, which has been defined here. And in this particular one, I didn't add any security requirements. That means I, I don't require authentication, but if you want, you could. Let's, let's just look at the input type. So you can see the input type. I've entered this. Output type. I enter what I expect the output to be. So you can see that it's very simple compared to the response from the external API. So I just use that. Save it. Click Next. Then it give me this. So remember, this is the front end to the external API. So, so I need to create a flow, how, how to process it. Provided API. So it's already selected because we've already configured it. So there's not really that much to configure. And then at the end, the return path. So I have to select 200 OK. So when everything is fine, that is at the end. But in between, remember, I need to actually call the external API. In this case, it's the DM service. I need to add it. Before, I have already configured that particular connector. So in here, I don't have to do much here. But before I can call the external API, remember that this is in the front end is a simpler API. I need to do some mapping between the parameters to convert the input parameters from the simplified API to that of the external API. So that means I need to add a data mapper.
because I've actually given it instance of uh, what the input data looks like, so it already has it in here for me to map. So the input mapping is much simpler. It's very X simple. So I just select this, drag it to the ABN, select the first name, drag it to the first name, select the last name, drag it to the last name. It's pretty simple, right? Now, on the return, after I call the external API, I have to massage the data so that I return the expected data from the simpler API to the uh, requester. So again, that means after I calling the valid, uh, the external API, valid date fields, so I need to call another data mapper or configure another data mapper. So let's get to where the information I want to transfer back to the uh, simpler API. So it's just uh, locate that information and drag it, of course, to the target. So ABM valid to ABM status, first day validated, and the last day validated. And that's it. That's all is required. So let's uh, recap. I created a provided API. So this is a simplified API. And then I pass it through the data mapper to map it to the input of the external API, which is the decision manager API. And after it received the response from the decision manager, it is going to another data mapper, which transforms the information from the return data into the data that is required by Simplify API in the beginning. And then it return it to the caller. And that's it. So since I already created this one here, so I just uh, cancel it. So notice that in the view here, I'm creating a new API. So it's actually give me an external API for this particular uh, uh, external URL for this particular API. I just created in front of the external API. So I have to use this. So let me just go to this thing here. So I've already added it, put this uh, base URL in there. And I'm going to validate the name John Wake. So by calling this particular uh, shell script. So you can see that it's valid. So if I make it like this and try again, so it's calling the first name is false because uh, this is not a valid first name. Or alternatively, I can Then you can see the last name is false because it's too long. Right. And that's it for this particular demo. Thank you.